problem set 34, uh, which discusses calorimetry, which um, mathematically is a very similar to what we've been doing um, on problem set 33 with heat capacities. And so for that reason, I've pulled the um, kind of figure here from problem set 33 as we talk about um, the different ways to calculate heat. Um, and one thing to draw your attention to is Oh, that we didn't use on prompt set 33 was uh, changing temperature with an object. Um, we don't use an MCAT, we use a big C delta T because if it's an object you don't get to pick the mass and so they just combine those into um, a heat capacity, a big C. And one specific application of that is with a bomb calorimeter, which you can imagine um, is related to calorimetry. And so we'll be using that later on on this problem set. But first some conceptual stuff. What is calorimetry? Um, calorimetry is a way of measuring energy um, you can imagine calorie right that's like the energy content of food is measured in calories and so we we use calorimetry to measure energy and specifically um, we like to use it to measure the energy of reactions so often a, a common thing we'll do is run a reaction um, in a container uh, let's say we burn something in a container. Well, that heat from the burning reaction heats up the container. And if we know the heat capacity of the container, then we can calculate how much heat left the reaction. So, And we'll get to do that. What is a calorimeter? Um, it's basically a um, unknown, well, let's say a container of known... Um, material or known properties in which to do calorimetry. What's well, a bomb calorimeter? Um, basically it's a really strong <laughs> um, calorimeter. I don't know how specific they want to get. But basically the idea here is imagine you have a really strong box, doesn't change pressure, uh, or it doesn't change volume, I can burn something in it, the heat goes into the box, and since I know stuff about the box, I can look at the change in temperature of the box, and I can see how much heat went into it. Okay, and again, we'll get to that. That's a bomb calorimeter. Why is it even necessary to know the heat capacity of the bomb calorimeter? Well, if we look over here, the Q of the calorimeter is the heat capacity times the change in temperature. So if we know that the heat the calorimeter is the heat capacity times the change in temperature of the calorimeter. We can measure the change in temperature after we run a reaction inside. So we have to know the heat capacity to know how much heat went into the bottom calorimeter, which again is the same amount of heat that left our reaction. Why do you use CP, your big C, the heat capacity, instead of using the specific heat or the molar heat capacity to describe the heat capacity of the calorimeter? Um, it's an object it has a defined um, mass, right? So it doesn't make sense to have to multiply by grams to get our heat because the grams would always be the same. So you can imagine they just take in our MC delta T equation, take the mass and the heat capacity and stick them together for us and they just get big C delta T. And when measuring the heat com of combustion of a very small amount of material, would it be better to use a heat calorimeter with a heat capacity that is large or small? Mm, interesting question. So I am <clears throat> measuring the heat of combustion of a very small amount of material. So I'm only getting a tiny amount of heat coming out. If I want to measure that tiny amount of heat, I'm going to want a, a bomb calorimeter that changes temperature a lot, even with a little bit amount of heat. And therefore, I would want a small heat capacity, something that when it absorbs a little bit amount of heat, it still heats up a lot. So I can still get a good reading. All right, calculate the heat capacity of the calorimeter in the, if the combustion of 4.663 grams of benzoic acid produces an increase in temperature of 7.149 degrees Celsius. All right, so just like we were talking about in problems at 33, we're going to go through this systematically. What are my Qs? Well, I burn benzoic acid, so I've got Q of my benzoic acid, and that heat goes into my calorimeter, right, produces... I'm trying to figure out about the calorimeter. It's the calorimeter that heats up. So benzoic acid plus the Q of the calorimeter adds up to zero. Let's move one to the other side just for prettiness sake. Negative Q 
calorimeter. Well, my benzoic acid, what is physically happening to it? It's reacting. So I'm going to have my amount of benzoic reacting times the delta H of combustion of my benzoic acid. And that's going to equal negative Q of my calorimeter. What's happening to my calorimeter? It's just changing temperature. And pretty much always, calorimeter will be changing temperature, and you'll just use the Q equals big C delta T, just like we were talking about. So big C calorimeter, delta T calorimeter. Now let's make sure I've got everything I need. Do I know how much benzoic acid I burn? Yes, so I've got that. Do I know the change in temperature of my calorimeter? Yes, increase in temperature 7.149. I'm looking for this, and so I need this. Well, I mentioned in problem set 33 video, anytime that there's a C or a delta H that they don't give you, and they don't ask you for it, just look it up. So in this case, I would Google, I would Google heat of combustion of benzoic acid. And the delta H of combustion of benzoic acid is 26.38 kilojoules per gram, okay? And you might get it in different units, uh, but I'm, I've got it in kilojoules per gram. So now let's plug everything in. I'm looking for the amount of my benzoic acid. No, I have that, sorry, 4.633663 grams of benzoic acid times the heat of combustion Okay, and really it is um, negative 26.38, right? Because after, when it burns, it's going to release that heat. So negative 26.38 kilojoules per gram. Those units work out. Grams cancel. Awesome. Equals negative C of my calorimeter, which is what I'm looking for, times change in temperature, which is increasing by 7.149. So it should be positive. All right, and so when I do this math, on the left side of the equation, I get, oh, calculator was off, negative 123 kilojoules equals negative C cal times 7.149 degrees Celsius. And I can just cancel out those negatives right now divide by the 7.149 and I get the heat capacity of my calorimeter equals 17.2 kilojoules per degree Celsius. So with every 72 point seven with every 17.2 kilojoules my heat bomb calorimeter heats up one degree. Okay let's do some more. The aromatic hydrocarbon simine is found in nearly 100 spices and fragrances, including this stuff. The complete combustion of 16.8 grams of simine in a bomb calorimeter with that heat capacity produces an increase in temperature of 19.35 degrees Celsius. How much thermal energy is produced during the complete combustion of one mole of simine? So what I'm looking for is the delta H of combustion of simine, because that is the amount of heat produced when I burn one mole. So what are my Q's? Well, I'm burning simine, so I've got Q of simine, and it's heating up a calorimeter, so Q of the calorimeter must equal zero. So Q of simine, I'm just gonna do Q of combustion, equals negative Q of the calorimeter. Well, combustion's a reaction, so we're gonna use N combustion, delta H combustion, and the calorimeter is a calorimeter, so I'm gonna use C cal, delta T cal. Again, that negative sign could be on either side. It just depends on which one I subtract over. All right, so how much? Um, well, let's see. What do I have? What am I looking for? I have the amount of simine that I'm burning. I'm looking for this. I have the heat capacity of my calorimeter, and I have the change in temperature. But I do know that they're going to want the, the uh, thermal energy produced during the combustion of one mole. So they want it in kilojoules per mole. So I'm going to go ahead and change my grams of simine into moles uh, so that I get the right answer at the end, or the right units at the end. So let's just do that over here. I've got 1.608 grams of simine and one mole of simine. I have the formula up there. So 10 times 12 plus 14. 134 grams. 
gives me 0 0.012 moles. All right, so I'm going to use that just to get me uh, the units that I want. Okay, so let's plug stuff in. 0 0.012 moles times my delta H of combustion, which is my goal, equals negative 3.64 kilojoules per degree Celsius times my increase in temperature of 19.35 degrees Celsius. Awesome, I just do this math and I get that the delta H of combustion is negative 58, 69.5 kilojoules per mole. And that's exactly what it's asking for, how much thermal energy, heat, which is delta H, um, heat is also Q, right? But this is asking for the complete combustion of one mole, so kilojoules per mole, okay, that's our delta H of combustion. Just because I'm picky, I don't like that box. Try another one. Okay. All right, next. Flavor of anise is due to anthol, which is a compound with that molecular formula. Combustion of one mole of anthol um, produces 5541 kilojoules of thermal energy. If you burn 0.95 grams of anthol, um, that's the heat capacity. What's the change in temperature? Okay, what are my Q's? I'm burning anethol. So I'm just going to say Q of combustion. Again, that's the combustion of anethol. Right? And then the Q of my calorimeter. And I just subtracted it over the other side already. Okay, my anethol is burning, so I'm going to use N of the combustion, delta H of the combustion, equals negative C cal, because it's calorimeter, changing temperature. Delta T cal. Do I have the amount of anethol? Um, I do. Do I have the delta H of combustion? It tells me when I burn one mole, I get 55.41. So it's telling me that the delta H of combustion equals negative 5541 kilojoules per mole. So I've got that. Okay. Do I have the heat capacity of my calorimeter? I do. So I'm in good shape to find the temperature. But my units won't work out right now um, because my delta H is in kilojoules per mole, and I have grams of this. So let's quickly find the moles of anethol. 0 0.95 grams and one mole of anethol. Uh, there's my formula. So 12 times 10 plus 12 times 1 plus 16, 148 grams. Which gives me 0 0.00642 moles of anethol. I can plug everything in. So 0 0.006 moles times my negative 5541 kilojoules per mole equals negative bomb column 7.854 kilojoules per degree Celsius times my change in temperature. You see on the left side of the equation, I'm going to end up with kilojoules, and the right side is kilojoules as well. So those units are good. I just do that math, and very simply, I get that the change in temperature with the calorimeter is going to be positive 4.5 degrees Celsius. Does it make sense that it's heating up? It does. Um, because something's burning inside of it, tells me that I got my um, negative signs correct. Okay, and now here's our um, here's our last one. Okay. Four grams of NH4NO3 at that molar mass is dissolved in 96 grams of water. The temperature of the resulting solution is 3.07 degrees colder. Okay, so then the water and ammonium were before. What's the value of the delta H of the following dissolution process? So we want to know this process, which is just, you could think of it as a reaction. It's just dissolving. You could also think of it as a phase change. You just want to know the delta H. What are the kilojoules?
per mole of this process. Okay. And right away, we can decide the sign. Okay. Is this process endothermic or exothermic? It says it gets colder. Okay. So when the NH4NO3 dissolved, the solution got colder, which means the dissolving sucked heat into it, and it sucked heat into it from the solution, so the solution got colder. So I know that, oh, my bad. I know that this value should be positive. I know that this process is endothermic because it made the stuff around it, the surroundings, cold. It says because the amount of the ammonia nitrate is small, we can assume the heat capacity is close to the heat capacity of water. Okay, so remember, at the end we have a solution, okay, but its heat capacity is very similar to water. So what are my cues here? I'm going to treat this like a reaction because they've written it like a reaction. I could also call it a phase change, but I'm going to call it a reaction. So I've got Q of this reaction, and Rxn means reaction. It's dissolving. And I've got the Q of the solution, okay, because the solution is what gets cold, right? I'm trying to find, yeah, it's the solution that gets cold. So I'm not going to say water because it's the water plus the NH4NO3. Those have to add up to zero. So the Q of my reaction is going to equal negative Q of my solution. Well, a reaction is a reaction, so we, we're not going to use MCAT. We're going to use N reaction, delta H reaction, equals negative Q of my solution. What's happening to my solution? My solution is just getting cold. So I'm going to use an M C delta T. Do I have what I need? Do I know how much stuff reacts? I do. Uh, 4.5 gra or 4. 4.0 grams go through this process. Do I know the delta H? No, that's what I'm looking for. Do I know the mass of my solution? I do, because I've got 96 grams of water and 4 grams of that, so the mass is going to be 100 grams. I know the specific heat of my solution, and I know the temperature change of my solution. So we are in good shape. So let's do it. Um, now, they want this in, doesn't say they want it in kilojoules per mole. Let's put it in kilojoules per mole. Uh, because that's most common. So I'm going to change my 4 grams very quickly to moles. And they give me the molar mass there, which is just another indication that I want to get it into uh, per mole. That gives me 0 0.05 moles. Going through the reaction. All right, so we can plug stuff in. I've got moles reacting times the delta H of my reaction equals negative. The mass is 100 grams. It's the water plus the NH4NO3 because it's the whole solution cooling down. And the heat capacity is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. Not because it's water, but because it says the heat capacity of the solution is pretty much 4.184. And then I've got my change in temperature. The solution gets 3.07 degrees colder. So my change in temperature is negative 3.07 degrees Celsius. So on the right side of the equation, I've got joules. On the left side, I, if this is in joules per mole, I'm going to have joules there. So we're good. So let's just do the math. And when I do the math, I get that delta H of the reaction is going to be 25.689 joules per mole. But we usually like them in kilojoules per mole, so I'll just quickly change it. Equals 25.7 kilojoules per mole. Oh. There we go positive as we expected um, and systematic as we like it. All right, so that is problem set 34, specifically talking about calorimetry and using many of the principles that we talked about on problem set 33.